Um, I, I see four opportunities here. Uh, one is the fact that there's currently a gap between the undersea cables have landed. But then, I mean, where is the internal connection, the inland connection, to actually take this huge access to the last, maybe not the last mile now, but to the, to the end user. And what I'm beginning to see in, in a few African countries, and in Nigeria in particular, is that the telecom companies are beginning to particularly invest in inland infrastructure. And that, I think, is a huge opportunity. Because at times when we talk about the undersea cables and see the maps and the pipes, you know, the question is, oh my God, so where, where exactly you know, is, this, is this going to? But the, the second opportunity I see is in terms of the numbers. I just checked the numbers for Nigeria for, for February. And, you know, considering where we're coming from, these numbers are interesting. There's 116.4 million connected mobile lines, 92 million active mobile lines. Uh, yes, most likely some of these mobile phones, maybe three mobile phones to two people and all that. But, but these numbers, you know, represent a major shift. Um, but, you know, she was referring to the problem with children's attention span earlier because, because of technology. And I remember that what I always talk about is the fact that we will actually eventually have to take this content to where the attention is. So for example, one of the key questions I've been asking myself is how can we compress mathematics, chemistry, and other subjects into one, okay, maybe 140 characters because of Twitter. Okay, um, and, but I think this is, this is a major opportunity. A few years ago and even now, there will be the clash between what is and what is coming. But guess what? We, we can't do anything about it. It's here. And I think we need to embrace that. So I see new opportunities in education, in business, in healthcare, and in other areas. Uh, a third opportunity, which is quite interesting, is I'm sure everyone obviously has read the story of how uh, Reem is going, the Blackberry makers are going through some kind of turbulence globally. <laughs> I saw, so I talk, saw two articles in Financial Times uh, two weeks ago. One basically talked about this problem. And the other one talked about how RIM is striking gold in Lagos. Okay, and, and it's quite interesting because even though there's a story of uh, sales declining in other places, but then it's become like a culture in Lagos and in Nigeria. So it's interesting enough, there's actually a Nollywood movie titled Blackberry Babes, part one and then part two. So, you know, there's, there's this, this opportunity in markets that are beginning to appreciate the use of this. And I think, you know, finally is the fact that, yes, uh, we don't want to stop our consumption, because consumption in itself is not, is not the end of, of the story. But we're beginning to see shifts, and I'm sure that, you know, uh, Vincent will, will, will see this in the people that apply to you. We're beginning to see shifts from just mere consumption to people who are beginning to clone. So there's the uh, Nigerian Twitter, there's the Kenyan Facebook and all that. But now we're beginning to see a shift thanks to mobile you know, platforms and opportunities to actually create them. So you're beginning to see relevant content being created thanks to, to, to the mobile opportunities. So I think this, these are four glaring opportunities when it comes to mobile and how it's been used. And of course, some of these things will mean radical shifts. So for example, in education, you know, I think that eventually uh, the attention span has reduced, but it will keep reducing. So the content has to go where they are, maybe in 140, 160 characters.